Yeah. Harry. Radio yeah. metal. Yep. Sounds rock. Sounds sounds heavy. G'day, how are you? I'm G'day. Joel. Check one, two. Jack one, two. G'day, I'm Joel. And I'm Harry. And we are from Airborne, and you are on... Radio Metal. Keep rocking. By asking you, how are you guys doing? Great, thanks. I've uh, apparently got high blood pressure, so that's interesting. Oh, wow. Uh, well, well, <laughs> no, I went to the doctor before to get uh, some medication for ADHD and uh, <laughs> just let it all out there. Um, and she so said you got high blood pressure. I think it's because I'm excited to be here. Um, two years ago, uh, the band parted ways with uh, guitarist David Rhodes. Uh, and just a few months prior uh, to you joining the band, Harry, uh, your band uh, had been touring with Airborne. So is this where you guys created a bond or does that friendship go even further? Oh, definitely further. We, uh, we, we, we had a bond over um, Johnny Crash. A band, um, uh, not to be mistaken for Johnny Cash. Even though we do love yeah. Johnny Cash as well. We love Johnny Cash. I hurt myself today. Uh, talking about neighbourhood threat, and uh, and Colt, the Colt and ACDC records, and uh, and and Kicks and Rhino Bucket, mm. and this goes back ten years. So we've known each other a while. Just mega act bands. Mega mega ACDC bands. <laughs> And uh, including ACDC themselves. Yeah, so we've uh, yeah we'd been friends for nearly ten years before that point, um, which made the transition really smooth and and natural. Just felt like it was kind of meant to be one of those kinds of things. We, we've known Harry for years, like years, and uh, so he joined the band halfway through that tour, and he fit straight in. And it was like because yeah, he, I think one of the things that's been really great for us is that he's a mate first before before even being in the band or anything like that. Uh, whereas if he was like, say, you know, he's from America or somewhere else, like somewhere with a different, and we only just met him, it would be a lot harder, I think. But because we have a mateship, there's a lot of in-jokes, there's a lot of laughs and good times. And um, so that's what's made it really easy. And then so making the record has been super easy because we just played live around the world a whole bunch of times and the record's live. So we did it in four weeks, four or five weeks. The way that we did the record made the the process of uh, from the point of joining the band for the two years of um, obviously then touring and then working on some new ideas and just bits and pieces, riffs and um, just being in the rehearsal room back in Melbourne before going over to Nashville. Mm. Um, it made it all super easy and it, I, I guess uh, a lot of uh, credit for that would go to Dave Cobb, our producer as well, um, yep. in helping to create an environment that um, he's not daunting, there's no pressure, it's, it feels very comfortable and very natural. Half the time um, we were recording without even knowing it, he j basically just had the tape rolling the whole time and yeah. all those moments of excitement of just mates hanging out, playing some music, were all captured. As you mentioned, he's a modern producer, um, known for a very classic thing, but it's, it's, it's a lost art. He's, he's like, you know, the last guard doing that sort of thing. Mm. Um, I think uh, Cobb and then even Greg Gordon who mixed the record. Yeah. We, they're two really special dudes who um, who are skilled in a way that a lot of modern people who are geniuses on Pro Tools and computers, mm. um, it's a different thing to produce the way that Dave Cobb does and to mix a record that's full of uh, instruments yeah. bleeding into every other mic and all those sort of things yeah. in music in general is that it's gotten too it's gotten too uh, clean too perfect too overthought about where it's almost like a production line where you've got to go back and make it hand make this stuff again you know with with only instruments and a tape machine people want to hear a guitar amp sound like a guitar not an effect through a digital thing in a computer like a, a plug-in so the fucking mic up a guitar with one mic, with one guitar, and play the fucking thing, and then record it, and then that's it. So you really did manage to record on tape. Yeah, like, tape. Yeah, that's how Cobb works. His whole thing is only do tape. How? I mean, isn't that tedious? Like, I mean, you, you, when you know that you, it could be easier, in a way, you know what? Oh, so so it could be easy in a way if you were chopping everything up. Yeah. So the way we did it was the band 
sat there, like stood in the room live. And then, uh, you know, we sat there first, worked out the song acoustically. And then Dave said, we got it. Let's, let's go plug into the amps now. You've earned your right to get into your amps. So we plug in, we do one, maybe two takes of the song and that was it. And so it's all one big take. And then he would say, oh, the solo, the energy in the second take was better. So he literally cut the tape and put that on the first one and that's it. And then we go sing over it. So, same way they did it back in the day. Yeah. And then, so in, it's, tape is tedious if you're going to treat it like Pro Tools. But if you're just going to do one take of the band, it's actually really easy because the length it took us to play it is all you need the time. Yeah, there was no... Uh, there was no moving kick drums around no. and, and doing the things that modern producers do now with the use of Pro Tools and yeah. click, 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 copy and paste. Um, yeah. uh, we'll we'll uh, take that that particular snare hit was the nicest one. So I'll then we'll go copy and, and paste, copy and paste and... it across every single snare hit shit. so it all sounds the same. Yeah. Um, that would have been tedious, but that wasn't what we were going for. <laughs> that transpires from uh, the music on Bone Shaker uh, more than on any other of your albums. So is this what rock and roll is to you, a kind of music that speaks to the animal instinct? A hundred percent. When I hear a song I love, there's nothing else a, a, a nuclear weapon could go off and i wouldn't even notice it i'd still be punching the roof fucking rocking out to the song like whenever i for the first acdc song i heard was thunderstruck whenever i hear that it's like the whole world disappears i just become i don't know like a tasmanian devil transport you back to that exact yeah, moment. exact moment yeah. and it's like uh when we hear a motorhead before the song rock and roll by motorhead where i think he says rock and roll like 30 times at the end of the song rock and roll. Rock and roll but it really speaks to you. And there's a Saxon Motorhead and, uh, and Rose Tattoo collaboration they did for I've Got a Rock to Stay Alive. And that, if, when I hear that, it's just, it, I'll run through an entire building because I'm that excited. So yeah, it's primal, it's in your heart. And that's why there's a song on the record, Rock and Roll for Life. One, and uh, I, th I think you actually mentioned the word feel uh, in, in your question. That was one word that kept kept coming up working with Cobb in the studio and one thing that we kept referencing um, all of our favourite records make us feel something and they have a distinct feeling to them it's not about perfection or mm. pinpointing the snare drum and uh, finding it perfect or anything like that um, that's what we were talking about the whole time it's got to feel like something and that's often why the f first or second take was the best because it's capturing the moment of inspiration where we're feeling the most inspired about yeah. the idea and that translates on the tape. Um, the album is only 30 minutes of music which makes it the uh, shortest album you've ever done and uh, it never really, really slows down. I mean there's a real urgency with four songs even uh, going under the three minute mark. So did you want to make this album like a, a, a tornado that's going through the speakers? Like no time to get bored? It is like a tornado. Like a tornado, going through, that's uh, good. That's, yeah. You should make that the headline. The review is that Airborne's new record is a tornado going through the speakers. I love that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I think uh, that, that's kind of similar. We, uh, our, our tour manager told us about a, a review of the live show from the tour we've just come off. And um, it said something about uh, the, the audience was enjoying a really nice, relaxing day until Airborne came on stage and napalmed the audience. <laughs> um, uh, Similar thing. Yeah. We're, tr we're trying to capture that sort of uh, full visceral, throttle. full throttle energy on the record. So, yeah, yeah that's cool to hear. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Take that as a compliment. It's um, you once said, said that uh, if some guy in the audience has paid uh, $2 and $20, then unless you come off stage bleeding, battered and bruised, then uh, he's not getting his money's worth. How do you manage to keep this state of mind after so much touring? I think it's just the love of rock and roll, and I think it's the crowd, you know, their energy, you know. Rock and roll for life. Rock and roll for life. Yeah, that's it's what not, it's about. <laughs> as soon as we all plug in and we start playing, that first note, first chord, it's just, you go as hard as you can, and you see the crowd, you know, you want to get the energy from them and give them, 
give them everything you got to make them forget about any bullshit that's going on in their lives or and also give them the fucking gift of rock and roll um and and have a great time the best time you could possibly have so when they go away they're like fuck that felt really great and they go back to work you know their ears are ringing maybe they're a bit hung over or, or whatever and they're just like fuck how was your night their colleagues might say oh how was your how was your night last night? I say, oh, I went to the airborne gig. It was the best fucking thing ever. I just, I, now I'm just going to quit my job. I told my boss to go fuck himself. I'm going to go start a rock and roll band. <laughs> That's the ideal scenario, but yeah. Okay. Hopefully some people will be doing that. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you very much for your time. Do you have anything to say like to the viewers of uh, Radio Metal? Thanks, thanks for listening to us. We talk, talk a lot of shit, uh, but thank you for taking your time and... Uh, <laughs> You know, to listen uh, and hopefully see you at a gig soon and keep it, keep it rock and keep it metal. Check out Bone Shaker. Rock on. <laughs>